I started platinum hunting about two years ago, and in my eyes, the Super Meat Boy Platinum is one of the holy grails of trophy hunting. It's a famously difficult platinum, rated a 10 out of 10 difficulty for an iconic indie game. I love Meat Boy because there's absolutely no fat on it. You can move, sprint, and jump, and that's it. There's not a single wasted mechanic or any fluff. Levels are short, difficult, and demand perfection. Back in 2012 when the game came out, I played and beat the main game. In this video, I'm going to walk you through my Platinum journey with a specific focus on some of the later challenges. Let's get started. Step 1 is to beat the main game. The game features 7 different worlds and 7 dark world counterparts. These dark world levels are basically harder versions of the light world levels. Completing the main game was a nice warm up for the Platinum. I got some trophies along the way for miscellaneous tasks like completing warp zones, unlocking characters, and nice. collecting bandages. Even though this is just step one to getting the platinum, the main game is no joke. I feel like I had a slight advantage wow. since I had played through these levels a decade ago, All right, but check out some of these later Tom levels. Alley. They're seriously difficult. Beating the main game alone, along with the Dark World levels, is a major achievement, even if it's only a fraction of the platinum. So if you're trying this out, congrats if you get that far. I think it took me about 15 hours to work through all of these levels and get all of the collectibles. I made pretty steady progress through the main game, but there was one trophy that was my first major roadblock. This was the trophy related to unlocking the Kid, one of the playable characters. You unlock the Kid by beating three levels in his warp zone. These levels serve as an introduction to the Kid's unique mechanics. He is a double jump. With only a handful of hours under my belt, these levels were a major step up in difficulty. This level alone took me several hours to complete, and my confidence was definitely shaken. I didn't know if I could actually pull off this platinum after going through this level. But eventually, I pushed through and was able to complete the three levels needed to unlock the kit. Oh, wow. So at this point, we've officially 100% of the game. It seems like we're off to an amazing start. How can this be a 10 out of 10 difficulty game? The answer lies with the 12 remaining trophies. These trophies are achieved by completing zero death runs of each world. A zero death run is when you complete all 20 levels in the world without dying once. There are a few caveats here. You can complete the levels in any order, so most people choose to start with the levels that they have the most trouble with and then work their way to the easier ones. If you're fast enough, you can also quit out of levels seconds before dying in order to save your run. You'll have to go back in and eventually beat that level, but if you're able to quit out before dying, you at least preserve your run. Finally, you can use any character for any level, except for the very last world in the game. This is a huge advantage, and you really need to learn a couple of these characters, because some levels were easy to cheese with certain characters. For example, Flywrench has a special ability that lets him stick to walls, which was really helpful for this level. The Kid is probably the most powerful character. He can double jump, and that completely breaks other levels. Knowing these rules, I started to chip away at these no-death runs. The only two of these trophies that didn't take much practice were that worlds 1 and 2. Most of the levels Lost I could beat go. on the first try, and I only had to be really careful on 2 or 3 right. of them. I felt like I was off to a good start but I quickly learned that the following worlds and their dark world counterparts wouldn't fall so easily. Each world has at least three or four different levels that I had to commit to muscle memory. To add to this stress, I was on the clock. I had plans to visit my parents for an entire month, and I had less than a week to complete the Platinum before leaving my PlayStation for this whole month. I really wanted to get this done in this week, so I didn't lose all the muscle memory that I had been building. At this point, I had 10 deathless runs left, and five days to complete them. So I resolved to get two trophies a day in order to finish in time. I was off to a good start on day one. I was able to dip my toes into the Dark World levels and was able to beat Dark World 1, as well as Light World number three. The next day, I kept pace and was able to get two more trophies. I beat Dark World 2 and Dark World 3. But day three is where things really started to slow down. The next no death run was World 4, AKA Hell. This was where the number of really difficult levels started to get into the double digits. I had to really practice again and again and again on 10 plus levels. Oh. 
I luckily was able to clear the light world version of Hell after a lot of practice, but sadly, I couldn't finish off the dark world version. I got a lot of good practice in, but ultimately had to admit defeat for the day. The next day, I managed to finish off Dark World Hell and even the light version of world number 5. I was back on pace. But with only one day remaining and the three hardest trophies left, I realized that this wasn't going to happen on time. On my last day before leaving town, I managed to finish Dark World 5 and get a lot of good practice on the light version of the final world. But sadly, I had to admit defeat and leave for a month with two trophies remaining. So, cut to a month later. I've just gotten back home and it's time to regain the muscle memory that I had lost. Off the bat, I'm immediately pretty rusty. I had to relearn a lot of subtle movements and get a good feel for Bandage Girl's momentum. But to be honest, everything came back pretty quickly. In fact, within two hours of playing, I was able to ace some of the levels I was struggling with before I left. It really goes to show you how much you'll improve while not playing. I think that was one of the biggest things I learned throughout this entire experience. Grinding five, six, seven hours straight to complete one of these Iron Man runs isn't the way to go. I found I had much more success when I practiced for two to three hours, got a good night's sleep, and then came back the next day having subconsciously processed all of those little subtleties I had learned. This was particularly evident with this light World 7. I was actually able to get it within two or three hours of returning home, which I was shocked by. So with light World 7 out of the way, we're down to one last trophy, beating Dark World 7. This trophy is called Impossible Boy because it is by far the hardest trophy in the set. I was feeling pretty confident coming off of beating Light World 7 so easily, but I did have one major concern. When playing through the game the first time through, I felt like level 19 of this world was by far the most difficult level in the game. This level had been sitting in the back of my head throughout all of my no-death runs. I didn't know if I would be able to consistently clear this level to make this no-death run an actually viable thing to pull off. So that's where I started. I went right to level 19 to see if I could break through. I hadn't played this level in a month, and my initial reaction was that it was still quite difficult, but not totally unreasonable. I spent some time grinding away at the level, and I was eventually able to break through. The hardest part of the level is by far the small jumps at the end. My trick was to tell myself to bonk my head on the ceiling immediately after each of these little saw blades on the top. As soon as my goal became this head bonk, I was able to clear this section almost every single time. In fact, level 19 quickly became one of the levels that I was most confident in, and I tended to do it later in my run. With level 19 under my belt, I turned my attention to the other levels in Dark Cotton Alley. After a lot of practice, I felt like there were eight levels that I considered very challenging. If I could clear these eight levels in a row without dying, I felt like I had a pretty good shot at beating the other 12. Let's take a look at each of these eight levels. The level that I was least confident in was level 20, the last level in the entire game. This level doesn't have the hardest jumps in the world, but it's very, very long. Having to be perfect for 45 seconds straight was just too much pressure to do later in a run. It's such an easy level to choke on. I also couldn't count the number of times that a good run was ended by missing this very first jump and running directly into the first saw blade. It drove me crazy. I eventually came to realize that level 20 just had to be the first level on my list. I wasn't going to be able to pull it off later in the run. I just didn't want to do that. After level 20, I went all the way to the start of the world to tackle level 1. Level 1 had maybe the least consistent jump in the entire world for me. I really struggled to get around this saw blade, land on the wall, and then quickly jump across the gap. After a lot of practice, I found a slight adjustment that made the level a bit more consistent for me. Rather than doing a tight turn around the saw blade, I started to make my jump a little bit wider. I can't quite explain why this made the jump easier for me. Maybe it's something about Bandage Girl's momentum being more horizontal than vertical. Regardless, this tiny change helped unlock the level for me. 
This level was really blocking me in getting good runs started, so it was huge to make it slightly more consistent. Up next, we have level 6. This was one of the easier ones in this list of 8, but it's still pretty dangerous. The key here is making sure you get enough height to make the jump to the right wall. To get the necessary height, you actually have to go a little bit slow. You need to be patient and let yourself reach the top of your wall slide. It's a tight jump, but if you get past that, the rest of the level isn't too bad. Let's take a look at level 8. The first jump here isn't too bad. You just have to go almost instantly. But the jump back is the stressful one. My strategy was to wait for a precise time to make the jump back. I chose to go at 8.2 seconds on the clock. 8.2 seconds lined up the jump with the widest gap between the enemies. All these gaps are slightly different, and I waited and found the widest one. After making that jump, and then a small hop, you go straight to the end of the level. Again, this level isn't insanely difficult, but it's another one that's just plain stressful. Having to stand still for 5 seconds preparing mentally to make that jump makes you really, really nervous. On to level 9. I think this level was my third most difficult level, just past level 20 and level 1. Lots of good runs ended at this level. The key to this level is finding the right timing to unstick yourself from these conveyor belts. And the timing is very, very tight. My point of reference was the pile of salt and the gray wall in the middle of the level. I would try to peel myself away from the conveyor belt right when Bandage Girl was level with the top of the gray wall. It's a pretty quick level, you only need to pull off this maneuver twice, and that's basically it, but it is definitely a very, very deadly level. Only three more very difficult levels left, and they're all in a row. Level 13 is called Bleach. This level is actually a bit similar to level 20. It's fairly long, you need to go pretty fast, and there are a lot of really small jumps. There are a few small skips that you can pull off, and it's fairly easy to quit to map if you mess those skips up. But beyond that, this was one of the levels that I was really scared of. The next level, level 14, is just super precise. It's tricky to navigate to the top of the level, but the hardest part is these small quick jumps that you need to pull off right after grabbing the key. You don't need to move incredibly fast, but the lasers will eventually catch up to you up top here, so you can't stop completely. And finally, the last very difficult stage is level number 15. The start of this level is really intense. You need to jump almost immediately and need a pretty precise arc on your jump. But once you grab the key and manage to get up to this corner, it's pretty easy to stay hidden. I played the rest of the world without audio as I found it was a distraction, the same song playing again and again and again, but I made sure to put my headphones on for this stage because it helped with the rhythm of these jumps. There's one last hurdle in this level that delivered some surprising deaths. Once the exit opens down at the bottom of the level, you need to make sure to jump straight into it. I died a couple of times by missing this last jump and sliding down a wall or just missing the gap entirely. That was super frustrating. I can't begin to describe how tough getting those 8 levels in a row was, and the absurd thing is that after that, I still had 12 levels to go. Those 12 levels were all a little bit easier, but there were still a number of times where I made it through my 8 difficult levels and then choked on an easier level. Here I have 4 levels to go, my hands are sweating, my heart is pumping, and it's super disappointing when I end up failing this level. But even with disappointments like that, I pressed on and eventually clawed my way closer and closer to the goal. Here I've completed 18 levels and only have 2 to go, and they're some of the easiest in the entire set. I really can't describe how nervous I was in this situation. I'm now one level away. I've been practicing for about 100 hours. I've done this level probably 50, maybe 100 times, and I'm really good at it at this point. There's no way that I should fail this. I just have to be careful, take my time, and make sure I don't screw up. This level was actually one of the ones that I struggled with at the start. I really had to find a pattern that I was comfortable with, and then once I found that, it was pretty easy from there. The relief at finishing this trophy and finally getting the Platinum was incredible. It is certainly the most difficult video game challenge I have ever tried. I'm super proud to have finally completed it. 
And honestly, I think anyone can do it. It just takes a lot of practice, a lot of dedication, but you eventually get good enough to do it, even when it feels absurd at the start. I completed the game with just over 10,000 deaths at about 75 hours of playtime. I don't know when I'll tackle such a difficult game again, can't really imagine doing one harder than this, so for now I'm off to play some more relaxing and easier Platinums. If you'd like to see more, check out some of my other Platinum videos here, and as always, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. See you next time.